For more debates, updates and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. I grew up in Northern Ireland, which isn't always the best start to uh, <laughs> discuss religion because it was a divided community and there was a lot of terrorism that was connected in a very complex way to Christianity of both versions, Protestant and Catholic. But the important thing was that my parents were very unusual for that kind of cultural context. They were Christian, convinced Christians, but they weren't sectarian, and that was very unusual. My father had a small business, we lived in a small town, 15,000 or so, and he tried to employ people from both sides of the community. Now, why did he do that? I once asked him, I said, Dad, it's so risky, and he was bombed for doing this. My brother nearly lost his life, and he said, look, he said, I believe that every person, whatever they believe, is of infinite value because they're made in the image of God, going back to the Hebrew scriptures. And therefore, I will employ across the community. And that has stuck with me. And it's been very important when you're discussing, as I often do, with people that do not share my worldview. That always comes to my mind. Here's a person in front of me, and it relates to what you were saying about freedom. I would connect with freedom value. That here's something outside of my parents that gave every human being dignity and value. That was point number one. The second thing was that they allowed me to think now, Northern Ireland's often associated with religious bigotry, extreme fundamentalism, all this kind of thing. And my parents were not highly educated, but they really gave me space. So my first encounter with Christianity was not mind closing, it was mind expanding. And I remember uh, when I was about 13, my father came along and he says, here's a book you need to read. It was Marx's Das Kapital. I said, Dad, have you read it? He said, no. <laughs> so why should I read it? You need to know what other people think. I never forget that. It was set a compass bearing. The third point is their Christianity was credible, morally credible. They actually lived what they believed. So. In that sense, I had a hugely privileged background that didn't compress me into a narrow-minded, bigoted person. And it was noticeable when I went to Cambridge in 1962, not 1862, I know I look old, <laughs> but when I went to Cambridge in 1962, many of my contemporaries from Ireland, the moment they got out of the country, that was the end of any Christianity. Because they'd never made it their own, they'd never thought about it but I'd been encouraged to think about it. And that sort of set the, yeah. the yeah. compass bearing. Yeah. There's one further yeah. point Go that on. really shaped my life. I was challenged in Cambridge very early on by a student at table at night. And he said, asked, do you believe in God? And then he said, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I shouldn't have asked you that, you're Irish. <laughs> <laughs> All you Irish believe in God and you fight about it. Now, I'd heard that many times, but somehow it was different. And I thought, gosh, yes, you know, I've never really met atheists. You know, in Ireland, people divide into Protestant atheists and Catholic atheists. <laughs> but they're, they're not really real atheists. Right. So I thought, what I'm going to do is to start today and befriend people, befriend them. That's important that do not share my worldview. And I'd spent my whole life doing it. 